Rocky, usually I try to sit up in these videos so it doesn't look like I have such a big gut. I really don't have this big a gut. It's just the way I'm sitting. This is Rocky, and this is Rocky's Roadmap to Success. Would you like a snickerdoodle soup, sir? Like, uh, yes. Oh, you're going to have to eat it right there. And if you get any crumbs, I'll get, and you'll be able to eat those too. Yeah, he's going to, I'm going to eat the whole thing. All right, so basically I met him outside on the street, and uh, that's something I'd like the Guardian to do in the future. And I'd like the Guardians to practice having him cut meat Chew it all, buddy. Promise I'm not going to eat it myself. Uh, practice having somebody come over once a week at least to practice meeting new people and then coming into it uh, into his place. And so uh, the structure that I went over is front facing is confrontational, sideways is more approachable. For dogs, we're more comfortable if we're sideways to them. Also, <laughs> if we're uh, uh, lowered. So what I did is I crouched down. And, uh, and I turned myself sideways, and then I basically tossed a treat halfway distance between me and him, if, imagine if it's where that water is. And he came over and took it, and they walked away. I tossed another one, this time a little bit closer to me, a little bit closer to me, and eventually when he's coming over closer to me, then I held my treat out to the side, on my side, not front facing, that's confrontational. Then he was taking some treats out of my hand, uh, and then we ended up coming inside. Now what I'd like the guardian to do is after she does this greeting, is then take Rocky and the guest, for a little bit of a walk, maybe just you know, 200 feet down the street, you know, around the block or whatever works. Um, and then when you get to the halfway point of the walk, you're gonna hand, lock the retractable leash into a set position where it's pretty short, and then hand it to your guest and your guest, and you're gonna walk back together. So this way, and when the guest comes in, I'd like the guest to keep Rocky on the leash, and then come and sit here or whatever chair they do, put the leash down the ground and step on the leash. Remember to keep it locked so it doesn't retract suddenly. And then the bird, the guest should not try to be talking to the dog, petting the dog, engaging the dog, avoid direct eye contact, especially outside. Those are, those are things we interpret as a challenge. Yes, I know, it's, it's been a long day for you, buddy. Um, but uh, we want him to, we really want the dog to come to the guest as opposed to the guest going to the dog because that's kind of the leader follower dynamic. If I go to him, then he's in, in charge. If he comes to me and I just don't care about him, well, that makes him curious about me. Then he wants to come to me, and if he's approaching me, then he's doing it on his, on his own volition, which makes him feel more empowered. And then he's also coming to me, which makes him a little bit humble. And then when he does come to me, I give him all these great, great treats, so it creates a positive association. You know, you got a little indigestion for those snickerdoodles. Um, and then when they, they come in, he puts the leash down, he steps on it, we leave him on the leash, and we want to wait for Rocky to sit, or preferably lay down. When he does, then the person should very subtly take their foot off the leash, so suddenly Rocky doesn't even realize we've done it. And then Rocky eventually is going to get up and walk away. When he does, he's going to be dragging him the retractable leash. He's one of his guardians should detach it. But now we helped him achieve a calm and balanced frame of mind. Uh, we let him outside where there's a lot more distractions. It's also more open, so the dog feels less trapped. We went for a walk. Dogs get over things by literally moving, to, moving forward. We met through a bunch of treats, and we met outside with those distractions. And we came inside, and the guardian, you know, the whole time this person not trying to touch me, not looking at me, ignoring me, not trying to talk to me. Then I'm sort of more and more interested in him because he's dropping treats like it's you know, raining Benjamins. And after a while, he's like, well, I kind of like when people come over. I get treats, I get a walk, I get attention, and I get the attention when I want the attention, not when the humans do. A lot of humans come up and we want to pet the dog to show you I'm a good person. I'm going to talk to you and baby talk, do all these things. If the dog is in a petrified or worked up state of mind, that's only going to reinforce it. So what we want him to do is learn that to practice being calm around new people and also learn that there's nothing wrong with new people coming around. Now, part of the reason he does this is basically he, uh, when I started, first started the session, he gets walked um, a lot because he has to walk uh, to do his business for an apartment, but he probably is a little under-exercised. Smaller dogs are twitchier, they need not a marathon walk. The Guardian probably would be better served instead of doing the longer walk that she does now to do maybe three or four 15-minute walks rather than a two-mile walk. Um, and just dogs kind of burn energy and then they sleep and recharge and they burn energy and sleep and recharge. So it'd be better if we could take them for a, a little bit of a longer walk in the morning, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes in the morning. We come home midday or next time we come home, take them for a 15 minute walk and then maybe uh, take them for another, you know, 10, two 10 minute walks or whatever it is. Keep on playing around with that. He doesn't, like I said, need a marathon walk, but the more walks we can give him, the more relaxed he's going to be. We should definitely walk him before we have guests come over. So he has, we burn off that excess energy and help him feel more, more relaxed. Yes, and I'm guessing normally he wouldn't be sitting in a, in a guest lap like this the first visit? No, he would. He would, okay, and once he warms up, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that tells me it's not a super bad case, but again, uh, the leader-follower dynamic needs to be redirected or uh, redeveloped. 
And so uh, he really, he was under-exercised. He didn't have any rules. This is, I think, the first guardian who actually said, no, no rules. Most people say, not very many. And then I press them and they say, well, not really any. Um, so your guardian did a good job. She said right away, yes. And so I uh, we went over the importance of rules and structure. The dog, uh, for dogs, whoever enforces the rules is considered the leader. And dogs go through life probing, waiting for somebody to push back to tell us that's how far we can go. We look at breaking a rule as a privilege or as an achievement. For dogs, breaking the rules is confusing. So for 30 days or as long as these problems go on, but 30 days minimum, we have to enforce these rules. So he's like, it doesn't matter because otherwise he's going to try it different times. What about nighttime? What about when the humans are eating there? What about when there's a football game on? What if there's a combination of things that allows me to get on the furniture now or whatever the rule is? So I'm going to keep on trying. And the dog's not being the obstinate, is being thorough. And that's why inconsistent or letting the dog break the rules confuses them into thinking that it's, it's, it's different. So don't think of yourself as doing them as a favors by breaking the rules. It's really not. It's confusing them. Some of the rules we went over are not being allowed in the furniture. Now, the guardian actually uses him as a therapy dog, and it's a wonderful dog, and I can certainly see why that happens uh, or why that's beneficial. But he doesn't have to always be on the furniture for it to cuddle. So I'd say maybe go buy a couple more pillows, make a nice pillow floor at the floor. You kind of like it because you're actually facing the TV instead of sideways. It's kind of comfortable. Um, and then you can hang out with him as much as you want, or he can be on the bed, but he has to get an invitation to be on the bed. Eventually, when the furniture, if, and when he's no longer as reactive to other people, then the guardian can invite him on the furniture when they want, not when he wants. And he shouldn't get on your lap unless you invite him on your lap. Instead of crawling right now, he's crawling on top of them, pawing, and they give him attention for pawing. We'll talk about why that's confusing in a minute. But uh, climbing on top of this is not a good, uh, it's not very respectful for dogs. So if you invite him up, that's different. You're asking him to do it. Um, another rule would be uh, make him sit before we go out any door before we get on the elevator, before we, get, before we get off the elevator, before we cross the street, before we get a new building, before I put my food down for you, before I pet you. So the more that we offer him these opportunities, like look, you can, and we'll talk about the petting in a second, but you have to sit before I'm gonna put the food down. You have to sit before I even pick up your leash. So sitting can be a more subordinate position and it's, it's we call it becoming operant, when the dog understands I can influence a human's behavior by offering a behavior that they want. So if I go sit in front of a human, they might pet me or I sit next as the door, they might let me out, things along those lines. Other rules would be he shouldn't be in the kitchen when the guardian is, is cooking food, rest time he can come and go as he pleases. When the guardians are eating food, he should not be within seven feet of them when they're eating. He should eat after the guardians eat their real meal. If that's not convenient for the guardians, then don't rearrange your schedule. Just get a chip or cracker, put food in his bowl first, don't let him eat it. Then eat the chip or cracker, somebody takes five or more bites. Then give him permission to eat. Now, I use passive training to give him a command word that needs to eat. So I have four dogs, and if I want to, they all have a unique command word. My youngest dog's name is, is uh, well, his name is Quest, but his word is feast. The way I taught that is every time that he took a bite of his food, the first bite, I would say the word feast. The other three dogs are in the room, and they hear the word feast. There's no food in their mouth. When he hears the word feast, there is food in his mouth. So to him, feast means food in my mouth. To them, feast does not mean that. So I have a unique command word for each dog, and I can say, I can yell from another room, feast, and he goes and eats. Uh, so come up with a word. You could say sushi, your favorite restaurant, uh, whatever you want. You could say food or eat, but try to come up with some funny command words because dogs should read human facial expressions. This family, because he's been a little bit uh, reactive, there's some tension. So if we come up with funny command words, maybe we say, we don't like Putin. Actually, there's some, some Russians who came from Russia and they were Jewish. And they left Russia because Putin was persecuted. They lived in this place called Hancock Park, which is a very heavily Jewishly pop, Russian Jewish population in Los Angeles. And their dog was reacting to everybody. And so they start they, and they couldn't, and they need, also needed a potty train. So we took it outside and they couldn't think of a word on the spot when he's potty him, say, just say Putin. And so they said Putin and gave him a treat. And then, uh, or say Putin when he started, and then they get, went to give him a treat. And they said Putin the second time, I get this guy that puts his, taps my hand. And he was a, uh, uh, I thought he was a rabbi at the time. He was just very, very religious, uh, I think, uh, Hasidic. And he had long tassels and the beard and everything. And he goes, why is Putin? I was like, well, they left Russia because Putin was not very nice to them because they're Jewish. And so now when the dog goes poop, we say Putin. He goes, put me poop. <laughs> and he started walking down the street and he started tapping him. Eh, you know, put me poop. <laughs> and they walked around the corner. We saw it three times. And then I ran into them, this is like three years ago, I ran into them and they were supposed to follow up with me, potty training and, and we were gonna, next thing we were gonna work on, they're always so reactive, people would cross the street, walk around them and cross the street again. 
just to avoid the doll. And so we were supposed to work on that next. And I ran into him. I'm like, man, you never called me. What, you know, we're going to work on that. He goes, don't have to. I'm like, oh, you fix it? He goes, no, you fix it. I'm like, we didn't work on that. He goes, once you start, we started saying Putin, everybody in our neighborhood hates Putin because we're all Jews and we're all from Russia. We don't like the guy. So every time we're out pottying, they hear us say Putin. And they come up and ask us. And we tell them that story. And the laughter has translated to the dog. When people come, they're not violators. They're jovial. They make my guardians feel nice and relaxed. And so now the dog doesn't react anymore. Now, I think in his case, when he goes out, his guardians probably feel a little bit uh, embarrassed that he reacts and they don't they want to be a good neighbor, and so they run away. Or they, you know, they do what they you know, can't you know, do whatever you want to, you know, you're trying to avoid that. And he feels sheepish about it. Well, if you start pulling on the leash and getting tense when people come by, then the dog's like, we're all cool, and then suddenly Something happened and the guardian's tense. What's different? That jerk is walked, it just came into sight. So I'm going to yell at that jerk for disturbing the peace. So we want the guardian to be nice and relaxed. That's why we did the video above on the focus exercise. So if he does start staring, which is usually the first sign that they're, he's going to react, he's going to stare and probably freeze or breathe really heavy. So if he does that and you give him a focus command, it's very easy for him to look up. If you wait for the dog to get right here, he's hysterical or worked up or what we call above threshold, he's not going to listen to you whatsoever. So the idea is if he's reactive, move him away until he can sit, sit or take a treat. Those are your indicators. He's far enough away that he like, doesn't feel threatened. But sometimes you have to walk around a car, you know, a walkway or something like that and block his line of sight. But the key is really when you're walking down the street and you see somebody coming, give him a focus exercise when he starts looking at him, then turn right and go around a car or whatever. And once you really get practice at it and he's comfortable with uh, you guys enforcing the rules and you're petting with purpose and all the rest of the stuff, You'll eventually be able to say focus and have walk by people and he's right here looking up at your face while the other dog walks by without reacting. Now, um, let me see, some, uh, some rules and structure are going to go a long way toward doing it. Remember, you have three seconds to correct or reward him for him to have the ability to understand what it is, but it has to be repeated over and over, which is why the rules and enforcing the rules consistently is so important. Uh, let me see, so uh, I practice uh, petting with the purpose of passive training. I use passive training to teach him how to sit. When we were doing the session, every time he sat, I pulled out a treat and popped his mouth and said the word sit. Remember, every time we're giving a treat, he should hear the command word after the treat goes into his mouth. It makes him look at the treat, the command word a little bit more favorably. And after a while, because I did it within that three second window, he, I started saying sit and he was sitting on his own. And the guardians practice for a day or two and I think you'll have it. So practice the sit, down, up and stand. The guardian kept on pulling the tree really far away. So remember when you're doing this, that spooked you a little bit, buddy? Keep the tree within an inch of his nose. He's practicing a little avoidance now. It's like, I want to get down. Now if I let him just squirt away, then that's kind of uh, going to be rewarding and he's going to remember that panic state. So I'm kind of not, I'm not, I'm not restraining him. I am restraining him a little bit. I just don't want to do that. So I'm going to let him kind of use his paws and I'm going to help him down. And then I'm just going to let go gently. So you saw he didn't squirt away from me. And then I'm offering a treat. See that lean that tells him tells me that he's not fully comfortable with me. He jumped on the furniture, but we're not going to block it for now. Uh, now to get him off the furniture, actually this is a good one. Hey Rocky. So what I did is I just dropped a treat on the floor. He didn't quite see that. The floor is a little bit busy. Rocky. And I say the word off. So you want to put things in context for the dog. So. Instead of forcing him off the couch, we just drop a treat and then he jumps off the couch in his own volition and when he looks up the treat, we say the word off. We do the same thing with this, which we're actually calling beach. And so by naming different things, we make it easier for the dog to say bed, couch, beach, uh, you know, out or whatever, or off or whatever it is. We're putting these things in context. We create a vocabulary, which makes it easier for us to effectively communicate with our dog. Uh, let me see. Um, uh, the, I like the guardians to also practice teaching him new tricks or commands. Now, again, when, I, when the guardian was doing the uh, sit down, up, and stand, she had a sense he had pulled her treat really far away. Sorry for the crumbs. Uh, but basically, we want to keep that treat within an inch of his nose. So if you go like this way and he stops, he stops tracking it, go back and literally touch his nose if you have to to re engage. I like using tricky trainer chicken liver flavored treats because the smell of the treat is everything to a dog. Those have a really strong aroma. A lot of people use cookies, but they don't have anywhere near a strong aroma. I'm using the snickerdoodles. Uh, these things actually have a lot of spices, so they do have a, a, a taste to them. Let's see if we can do that again. Rocky. Now, I'm not enticing him, I'm not telling him. He saw it there. He's, I think, waiting. I think he's so used to his guardians 
fixing things for him that he's used to waiting for them to go pick it up and bring it over to him. So there you go, now he's, now he's coming, off. So now we create a positive association for that. How about it come? You wanna come and get these crumbs so I don't litter them all over the place? Come. So I'm saying just the command word. Try to avoid saying good dog or good come. Just the word come, just the word sit, just the word crash. And come up with a list of the command words, all the official commands. Instead of saying, come, come here, over here, here, boy, dog's name, whistle, dog's nickname. That's way too many things for him to remember. So if we have a command list, we always say come or here. We always say sit or crash or whatever these things are. It makes it easier for him to perform because he doesn't have to listen for as many words as we say. Now, the guardian was a little bit, uh, I asked how she was feeling towards the end of the session. She goes, well, I feel good about the sit and all this stuff, but what about if we meet people on walks and all that? These things are all a relation. Uh, there's several factors involved. He didn't know any commands before I got here, really than kind of a wait. Um, he uh, was able to tell his guardians whenever to pet him, and they listened to him, so clearly he's in charge of the humans. But the humans don't always listen to him when he warns them not to go out with it without their, his permission or on a walk. He tells them, go walk towards that border collie, and they walk right towards that border collie. That stresses him out. He has cortisol, cortisol in his blood, which makes him not uh, the stress hormone, so he's not going to be performing as well. And he's used to climbing up on top of his guardian like as she is on a nursery ride. Now, he does help her as a therapy dog. He just photobound that was his nose. Um, but it's not healthy for him to do. Uh, in some situations, it's not always healthy. A balanced dog, it's okay. But in his case, he's just confused upside down. So am I in charge of them or are they in charge of me? And so we need to communicate and effectively help him understand that we are in charge of him through our actions, by enforcing rules consistently, by petting with a purpose. Uh, passive training is, I started talking about earlier, let me finish both of those. Passive training is waiting for the dog to organically offer a behavior that we want without any influence from us whatsoever. So if Rocky were to walk over to me, I'd pet him and say, come. I'm petting him within that three second window and I'm saying the command word. Um, if I have a treat, I can pop the treat in his mouth, but a reward, you know, affection is just as good. Right now he's pawing at his guardian. And that's what we would use uh, petting with a purpose for, which we're gonna talk about in a sec. So passive training, every time he comes to you, pet him and say come, every time he lays down, pet him and say crash, every time he sits, pet him and say sit. If he's laying down, he sits up, pet him and say the up command, every time he stands, pet him and say stand. All the, all the toys that you have, he brings you that toy, you should name each toy, so you have a vocabulary for those as well. Um, it's just rewarding desired behaviors. For dogs, any attention from the human is validating. Most dogs are trained to misbehave because the best, quickest way to get our attention is break a rule or do something we don't like. I'm gonna steal some underwear. I'm gonna chew your shoes. I'm gonna bark or whatever it is. And then the dog continues doing those things. Well, um, so now we're gonna reward him and start going out of way to give him attention. Every time he does desired actions, behaviors, he will start emulating those. Now that he knows to sit and once he gets better at it, the guardian, if he's pawing at her like he was just doing a minute ago, she could tell him to sit. So when he tells her what to do, nothing happens. When she tells him what to do and he does it, he gets rewarded. He is now has a motivation to sit and listen to her. When he does try to pet him under his nose and under his chin and say just the command word for sit, nothing else. Um, if he's always sitting, ask him to come and lay down or sit over here or shake. I wouldn't usually recommend shake, but he just has to do something to change his state. After a while, he will start coming in front of you and prepaying for attention. Now we are in an apartment, we're downtown Omaha, and uh, he being uh, thinking he's a security dog, one of his problems is he barks a lot when there's knocks at the door. So uh, I asked the guardian if he uh, gets, if they have to spell W-A-L-K, she said sometimes. Well, it's the same sort of thing for walk and for knocks at the door. I would walk, I would say walk 100 times a day when we're not going for a walk to break the association. Same thing for the knock. First time I did this, he, he, he barked about 28 times. This is about five or six, seven, eight. Laid down and gave us a half one. Crash. So if we practice knocking on the wall and there nobody comes to the door, we break that association. If we say the word walk and then don't get the leash and go out there, we break that association. So we create a, a situation where we knock four and he laid down right away. You'll see him calming himself down faster and faster. Um, so practice doing that. Um, also leashing him up. If you're walking to where the leash is, as soon as he walks in front of you, he's taking the leadership position. So stop, turn around and go sit down. Don't say, don't say correct him, don't say anything. As soon as you take over, I lose interest. You might have to go back and forth over and over again. Eventually he'll walk behind you the whole way you go over there. And then when you get to where the leash is, tell him to sit and start reaching for it. You won't even get a couple inches and he'll get up. Stop, tell him to sit, or go sit back down on the couch. 
And eventually you'll be able to go through, at first it's here, then it's here, then it's here, then it's here, and eventually you can pick up the, the leash. And then, but he just has to stay seated the whole time and then you attach the leash. And by the time you go for a walk, his, balance, his energy is calm and balanced. You take, if you like attach the leash and then you get him on a walk, he's all over the place. He's a madman. It's gonna be hard for him to listen to you. Um, also look for ways to delay gratification. When the guardians come home, he is kenneled. Well, go and open the kennel door and stop and, and, and step your feet on front and block him from exiting. Or somebody will use a tennis racket for a little dog like him. Wait for him to sit. As soon as he sits, take a step back and invite him out and say, come. After a while, he'll start sitting right away. It'll take enough repetition, but eventually he's, oh, so when I sit, I get out? Cool, I'll just sit right away. Then, then we go to the next step. We make it even more challenging. Now you have to lay down. And we don't say anything. We just wait for him. As soon as he lays down, boom, you get freedom. And then eventually it's lay down plus one second and then two seconds. So he learns just because the door opens doesn't mean I'm going to get, I'm going to get my way. We try to do a Marco Rubio drink here. Um, so basically what we want him to understand is I can't tell the humans what to do. I have to ask. I have to be patient. I have to be polite because I'm no longer the leader around here. The more confident he is through uh, new commands and earning it and all the rest of that, the less reactive he's going to be. I like the Guardians uh, practicing a sit down, up and stand is going to be great. Those are pretty easy. I'd like them to go to YouTube and find some videos on how to teach your dog to balance a treat on his nose or uh, crawl or sit pretty and beg or roll over or play dead. Fun, easy ones that you can achieve pretty quickly. And the Guardians, there's two Guardians in his life. I'd like them to tr take turns. One Guardian, <coughs> excuse me, teaches him one thing uh, this and then on Sunday and then all week long we practice play dead. Then the next guardian, the next week, teaches him how to roll over. And then all week long, he practices that one. We keep doing this over, um, maybe each guardian trades off. At the end of two months, he now has eight new commands, plus sit down, up, and stand. So now he has over the average of 10 commands that most dogs in the United States have. <coughs> Sorry, I have a frog in my throat. But the more confidence, he, uh, the more uh, skills that he has, the more confident he's going to be, the less reactive he's going to be. We're trying to tackle these problems on a whole bunch of different angles simultaneously. Um, practice the leashing thing when you're not practicing, planning on taking it for a walk. So now, right now, guaranteed the leash comes on, we're going outside. Well now, it goes on every three times for every one time we go outside, so it's only 25% of the time. Now I'm gonna be 25%, <coughs> excuse me, 75% less excited when we're gonna go for a walk. And just like humans, if he's not hysterical, it's gonna be easier for him to understand. <coughs> Man, I got something in my throat. I cannot get rid of it. So we're going to end this video. This is Rocky's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.